Freaks, welcome back to My Kitten Reads. I'm Eleanor and this is Friday Reads for the 10th of May. I haven't done a Friday Reads in ages, um, but I'm in like a perfect circumstance, a perfect storm um, because A, I've not been acquiring much lately so I haven't really been doing book hauls. B, it's a Friday where I have a weekend ahead of me and I actually have no plans, which in the last month or so, I've usually got something on outside. So whether it be theatre or a festival or a guest or whatever, but I've got nothing on. And the weather's getting cold. It's been raining today. It's going to be, continue to be a bit chilly throughout the weekend. So perfect indoor reading weather. Um, I won't be entirely reading. I have some essay research to do, but I'll be mostly at home. And I'm hoping I'm going to get a lot of reading done, particularly also because the other circumstance is I finally finished the book that I have been reading for the last four weeks, um, which is the Anna Karenina. So I can start something new or pick up something previously that I had been distracted from. So I have a few things that I have that are choices. So um, on my Kindle, I'm hoping to finally get back to a regular uh, running routine at the gym because the last month has just not worked. Um, which means, reading on my Kindle, which means I will hopefully get some more read of Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti. Um, I'm about halfway through this. Um, this is the book that is described in a nutshell as Eurovision Space. It's absurd. It is also on the Hugo novel list, so I would really like to finish it um, because actually finishing something from the novel shortlist, that will be novel. Um, so I that's kind of my gym book at the moment. So uh, I would really like to try and get some more of that read. Also on my Kindle, um, I was just sort of poking around on Amazon, looking for various things, browsing, and I stumbled over the author Anne de Corsi, who writes history, like non-fiction, history-based non-fiction, but she writes sort of based around the 19th and early 20th century and very feminine topics and so I've bought the ebook of her book Husband Hunters which is about the latter part of the 19th century going up until 1905 and the whole bunch of rich American heiresses who kind of invaded Britain and married a whole bunch of poor aristocrats. So that kind of sounds like my thing. It sounds fascinating. It's social history. Um, and it just sounds like fun, so I might pick that up if I am in the mood for non-fiction that is not my research essay. I also have a couple of other things in hard copy. So, um, I still have not read Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, which is the second in the Murderbot Diaries series of novellas from Tor.com, and is also on the Hugo shortlist. So I, would really, I should really should try and make some progress on my Hugo reading. Um, so since I have this, I'm hoping to pick it up. So this is second in the Murderbot Diaries. Um, it, so as well as being Hugo reading, um, Murderbot is a non-gendered being. Um, it's a bot, but it specifically is written with no gender preference. It prefers non-binary. So that would probably count for my trying to read uh, queer protagonists because it may not be a sexuality, but it's a gender thing. So um, that counts, that totally counts. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed the first Murderbot book. Um, this is the second one. There's two more novellas and I believe there is a novel coming. Um, so The Adventures of Murderbot. Looking forward to picking that up. And then I have been thinking about picking this up this month. Uh, it's called Meet Me in the in at the Intersection. It is a collection of YA and middle grade short stories and short works. Um, from Australia, it is edited by Rebecca Lim and Amberlyn Quimolina, and it's basically a collection of stories for young people that are intersectional. So they're not just about being queer or just about race or just disability. It's about the intersection of all of these different things, um, which is interesting. And because the end of this month in May in Australia is Reconciliation Week, and I like to try and read something. Um, that I can do a specific review for, for Reconciliation Week. Um, and this is on my TBR, and Amber and Quimalina is both the editor and has a work in here, and as does her brother Ezekiel. Um, and there are probably other First Nations people in here as well. 
So, I think, and reconciliation, I think, is what intersectionality is all kind, kind of all about in that you can't reconcile with a people if you don't understand that those people are diverse within themselves. Um, so there are Indigenous people who have disabilities, Indigenous people who are neuro neurodiverse. There are Indigenous people that believe in different religions and there are Indigenous people who are queer in various ways. So that intersectionality needs to be understood. So I figured this might be a good book for Reconciliation Week. So I'm hoping I'm going to at least start this um, this weekend. So that is a plethora of choices. I may also pick up some comics. Um, I have the last couple of volumes of G. Willow Wilson's run on Ms. Marvel. I have the last couple of issues of Shuri and you know I may even go to Comicsology and pick up some more of the 90s X-Wing comics. I don't know. Um, they're, they're all possibilities that are in my head but I would really like to pick up at least a couple of these these books. At least. But we will see how I go. Hopefully I'm in the mood to read because I've just read an 817 page book and I've really been intensely reading it to finish it off the last couple of days. So um, I'm in that kind of a mood and it is that kind of weather and I have that kind of time. So yeah, that is what I am planning to read this Friday and weekend. Um, if you have specific reading plans for the weekends, let me know in the comments down below. If you have read any of these books, let me know what you thought without spoiling them. Um, or if you want to know more about them, ask me. Um, but yeah, bye for now.